can everybody see? I'll have to change this. I have to change this now. The Empire State Building. I have to get a picture of Central Park in here now uh, for my main slide since I moved along the park. Welcome, everyone. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armel, and I own the Stock Swoosh, and I short. And we're going to talk today about shorting. And the topic today is how to make 20 grand a month shorting, but you could say 30 grand a month, 40 grand a month. How much money you risk has to do with how much money you're going to make and the quality of the trade that you take. So, for example, <laughs> if you shorted a stock that fell 10 cents and you had a thousand shares, you'd make what? A hundred bucks. If you shorted a stock and it falls a dollar with a thousand shares, you're gonna make what? A thousand dollars. So I'm trying to look for stocks that are gonna have big moves that I'm shorting. I don't really wanna do things for five cents, 10 cents, three cents, okay? The whole point of trading is to try to get the biggest bang for your buck that you can so that, again, you can take your money and flip it around as much as possible within the shortest amount of time possible. And one of the reasons that I prefer to short, because that's mainly what I do, is that I like the fact that stocks fall faster than they rally. And that's just a fact. And we'll talk a little bit today about the market as well. Oh, this is me. If any of you have seen me, I appear on TV. I was on a new channel two weeks ago. There's a new channel popping up every day. If you have not seen me on TV, I'm sure you will shortly. Soon you can go to my YouTube and watch TV hits. In fact, the sell-off we had in the last week in the market, I did talk about on a television hit prior to the sell-off. So I was expecting that to happen. If you have questions, you can certainly email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And again, if you're interested in anything I have to say today, I definitely encourage you to reach out, whether it's for questions or if you're thinking about signing up for my class, which we'll talk about here at the end. I will answer the phone if you call me. I'm a real person. I live in New York, and you can leave a voicemail. If I'm busy and I don't answer, I will call you back. So first we're going to talk about, again, this whole concept and idea of earning a living trading. When I started trading, I did it because I wanted a new career. I found that now since I started my business at Stock Swoosh, which was way, way back now, 2012, that a lot of people start to trade, get it in their head they want to do this, and really don't have a goal for what, why they're doing this. If you want to do this, you should know, is this something you want to transition into a career? Do you want to do it part time? Do you want to do it full time? Are you retired? And this is just something you're going to do on the side for a little extra income. I think if you're focused and you have the goal ahead that why you want to do this, it's going to help you do a lot better. And again, for me, I knew I wanted to do it for a career. And again, I was doing mortgages for a long time and I started to hate my job. I did at the beginning, but I started to because things started changing so much. If you're at a point where you have a career and you don't like it anymore, you don't like it, you don't love it, it's not that people don't have bad days. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you dread going to work every day. It's, it becomes a real drag on your lifestyle. Your whole life, it falls over into your personal relationships. You really have to love what you're doing for a living because you're going to do it for hours and hours every day for a long, long time. And I think that this is a transition for many people when they decide they want to trade. You may take my class, sign up, start trading with me and be off to the races day one. Or it may be a learning curve for you. Again, I don't know people personally. I get to know them over time. But the fact is that you have to start somewhere if this is something that you really think you want to do and you want to be successful. And again, for me, it was a journey and it was a quest. It wasn't like I woke up one morning and just figured this all this out in a day. I wish that would have been the case, but that's, that's not realistic. It's not realistic for anyone, you know. And again, I see some new faces here. If you have questions, you can plop it in the room down here where I'm going to chat. Hi. Going to ask questions in the chat as we go along. 
So again, how is your year so going so far in 2024? Is it going good? Is it not going good? Is it not as good as you thought? Could it be better? You know, I started the year again. We had the rally in the market, November, December, into the close of 2023. Market was very bullish. Everyone was buying every dip. Hello, yaha. Everyone was happy, singing and dancing. And then all of a sudden, 2024 was choppy, started out choppy. Then we were sideways. Then we were sideways for a while. Had first quarter earnings season. Now we're in second quarter earnings season, which really has just started. We're only about six days, seven days into the first, into the second quarter earnings season. But already you've seen a change, a change in the market, a drastic change in the last two weeks. Sentiment okay, has changed. And now all of a sudden, all of this scuttlebutt talk about interest rates. And again, talk about me being on TV. I actually said it on TV. Uh, two hits I did a couple of weeks ago before they even came out last week, which is part of the reason for the sell-off, and said that they may not r lower rates at all this year. I even talked about that. And I said that not because I'm a psychic, but because I'm a consumer, just like everyone here. And if the Fed's goal is to keep inflation low and to lower inflation or try to get it back down to 2% or even 3%, prices are still too high. So anyone, again, could just common sense tells you that we're not getting as far as we need to be. Prices are still too high. It's pressure on consumers. So, of okay, course, so why would the Fed want to lower rates when they're nowhere near their 2 to 3% inflation go? And, of course, that number has changed as well. So if you're at a point in your trading where things were going good and now they're not, you got got to kind of take a step back and, like, regroup. Now, I put the stats in here. I, was, I took the weekend off. I didn't update this. But this is only through April 5th. I'll have to update this. But so far, again... Today's April 22nd, so I have to update this. We've had a good year, a good start to the year. Most of the trades that I do in the day trade room are shorts. These are all trades that I called in the room. I call the trades live in the room. They're day trades, which means they're trades on margin. We're going to talk about some today. 309.190, again, this is only through April 5th. This is not updated either through the last two weeks of trades, but I risk more of my options trades. If you want to do options, I have a newsletter, which you would sign up and get the options trades. This is a mix. This is a mix of puts and calls. I do not only short for the options, but we did do shorts in the market last week. They weren't. And again, it's earnings season now, which means stocks are reporting their quarterly earnings, and we look at calls and puts. But again, like everything else, I do prefer to short, which is the topic for today. But I risk more of my options, which is why this, this stat is higher. I risk more because I want to be able to do trades like NVIDIA, for example, which can be very expensive to do. Uh, that's probably the most expensive option that we do if you've ever traded it. But this, again, is not updated through today. I will update this this week. Anyways, for the year, our stats, our win ratio is an average of 71%. Day trades and options, again, 142 winners, 59 losers, 5 break even, and 206 trades. Again, this is not through today, but this we're pretty much i think we're a little bit better than this after last week actually for the win ratio so that means if you come to me and you take 10 trades figure three are going to be losers and seven are going to be winners on average your risk that you take per trade is really going to be up to you which has to do with the cost of the position and your account size and how much buying power you have and again if you have questions about that you can ask me too but again, through April 5th, we were at a slightly over 1,118,970. There are people with me that are actually risking more than 8,000 in some of the options trades. But again, that is your decision. If you want to ask me, Melissa, I have an account with this much money in. What do you think I should risk? I will tell you and give you my feedback. But that's a decision that only you can really make as far as your cash amount. And again, I see some people popping in here. Any questions, pop it in the room. I see your chat, Mark. Getting back to what I was saying, though, as far as earning a living training, it's really the American dream. And you don't have to be an American to have this dream, but it is the American dream to become rich, successful, and financially independent. And do you have a plan to make that happen? When I was discussing earlier about the fact that I wanted a career transition, again, I needed a plan to make that happen. My plan to make that happen was what? Well, I decided to take a trading class. I thought I was going to learn how to make money in that class. I didn't. I didn't. I learned a basic general information about technical analysis, which allowed me to start trading on my own, and then I figured everything I know out. But it wasn't like, again, 
one, two, three, four, five, six steps. It was like 10 steps forward, three steps back, five steps forward, one step back. And for many people to trade the stock market, that there is, that's what it is. You may come to me, and there are a few people that have come to me that have never traded or taken a class. They take my class and they move forward. But many people, and this could be some of you here, have taken other classes, not been successful, lost money in trades, lost money in the market, taken classes, didn't get anything out of them, and you're back and forth for years trying to figure it out. It's, you have to decide either you're going to take it upon yourself to create your own strategy or you're going to pay for a class and learn someone else's. So while, again, when I started, I didn't know how long it would take me to figure everything out that I was going to do. I thought that I was going to figure it out like that. And again, it took me three years. But, I, you know, once I did figure it out, I never looked back. And now here I am. So it's a question of finding the right fit. For you, for me, it's definitely the morning trades, definitely the shorting. I'm an I'm a early morning person. I get up early. I like to do my ratings in the pre-market. I like to prepare, get up early. I like to trade and get in, get out quick. And any questions, again, put them in the room. Mark's asking a question. Are these results from your direct trading or traders in the room as a whole? I... <laughs> Every, that would be, that would, that's a good idea, Mark, for everybody to send me the results every day. Um, I wonder how many people would actually be strict enough to do that. No, these are my results. <laughs> but that's an, I, I wonder if I ask people to do that if they would. Here's what I have found with people. And again, everybody's personality is different. As I get to know people, they start to talk to me, ask me questions, or tell me there is results. But there's definitely some people that are more chatty and share more than others. I have one gentleman, um, actually, he's gonna be, I think, in one of the emails this week, because my assistant does the emails. He's, I think I've talked to you before about him. He's blind. His name is Brian, and he sent me a text over the weekend. He is as happy as a clam. Um, he's only doing options, though. He doesn't do day trades, and he's told me he's made 13 grand since he joined the options newsletter. Now, he did do the class a couple years ago. Um, and then he stopped trading, I don't even remember why. And then he rejoined, I don't, I don't even know if it was a month ago. I think he rejoined in March. So he's made like 13 grand in a month. And again, we had a big sell off last week. He did the puts. But I think one of the most amazing things about Brian is that he's, he's blind. Um, so again, he shared that with me. People share the results with me if they want to. And then occasionally I use them to market. I don't really email people and ask them though, Mark. You know what I mean? Like, but if I don't hear from someone for a while, I might email them, you know, Susie, I haven't seen you in the room for a couple of weeks. How you doing, Susie? Or something like that. You know, so that's one of these things where it's, I don't force people to tell me what they're doing and how they're doing. But the best time to actually talk to me tell me how you're doing is in the live room, in the daily room. If you're there in the room every day, if you have a question, you ask me there live. And again, there are some people in the room, and we're going to talk about some day trades here, that don't use stops. That is their choice. I use stops, which is how I have some of the losses. Um, you know, people sometimes don't use stops. I teach people to use stops. Um, if you don't use a stop, you basically have an unlimited risk. So, you know, everybody that's in the room has done the class. Doing the class is prerequisite to join the room, but not everyone that has, is on the options newsletter trading options with me has done the class. And again, the risk amounts for what people are, are taking is all over the place. Some people are doing one contract in the options. Some people are risking more than I'm risking. Uh, we did Netflix on Friday, and somebody in the room risked $10,000 on the day trade. That, I thought, was insane. I personally didn't risk $10,000 on the day trade in Netflix Friday. I thought that was a crazy amount of money for the price of the stock. Somebody wrote in the room that they did it. It was a big stop. Again, I don't want to get too off track here, but if you have questions about your risk, you can ask me. If you want to offer up what your results are, if you join Mark, you certainly can, but I don't, I don't force people to do that. I don't ask people how they're doing unless I don't hear from them for a while or they don't show up for the room or something. But usually it's something, something's going on with their family or their job or they're sick or they had an operation if I haven't seen them for a while. So these are my results. But this is me calling the trades in the room. So technically your results should be similar to mine. If your risk is the same, yes. But again, some people don't use stops. 
So while maybe I take a stop, do a retake in something, their stop, their train could trail out against them with X, Y, Z, unlimited risk if they don't have a stop in. So yeah, they're not gonna take a stop when I would take a stop. But if you're following me in the room, I'm calling the entry, the stop, and the exit. And yes, you should have similar results. Your risk though should depend on the size of your account. Say for example, you have a hundred grand in a trading account. If you're at a retail broker, you have four to one margin. If you're at a prop broker, you're gonna have 10 to one margin. Well, you'd have a million dollars in buying power then. You'd be able to trade Netflix with us, which was expensive. We did as a day trade and lots of other things. But anyways, as far as your risk goes, I'd still start it out small right after the class. But if you have 100 grand in a trading account, you certainly could risk $3,000 a trade. You could risk more. We're doing one trade a day, maybe two. Again, I'll take a trade. If I get a stop, I'll do a retake. But it's not like as far as the day trades go, I'm not doing five, six, seven, 10 day trades a day. You can see that in the stats. Now, I might do a bunch of options and be in several options at once, okay? I might be in eight options trades at once, but I'm not doing eight trades a day. So if I'm in five, six, seven, eight options at the same time, I'm probably waiting for them to go. And again, I'm not doing that many trades every single day on the options newsletter. Does that answer your question, Mark, and anybody else? Let's see if there's any other ones here. Um, I was going to say something else now and I forgot. James, I don't know if you're having trouble. I saw you in and out a few times. I don't know if you're having uh, problems with the room. Okay, so let's talk about shorting. And again, remember, as far as risk goes or results, I just got done telling you. I mean, I've been doing this a long time. So, you know... And I don't do anything else. I also created the system I use that I now teach too. So, you know, I am the expert. I, I'm the one, if you say, Melissa, what do you think about the market? I'm gonna tell you, right or wrong. And again, you know, there's trades that I lose in. I just said our win ratio is 71%, it's not 100%. No one has 100%, okay? And again, that could vary. I think after the last week, we're probably closer to 74 74% win ratio, but that's still really, really good. But anyways, I've been doing this a long time and I created the system, I invented the system. I personally think that in a day trade, a margin trade, I think a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars is a really nice risk. Uh, you certainly can get, you know, make good money with that. So divide the stats I just showed you in half, even to be up, you know, 150, you know, four months, three and a half months into the beginning of the year, that's substantial money trading, specifically when you think about the fact that many people are losing money trading. Same thing with the options. You know, again, a thousand fifteen hundred is certainly, certainly a good risk. And there's many people that are just taking one contract. Now they're not doing the Nvidia's. If Nvidia cost twenty five dollars for one contract, you'd have to be risking a minimum of two thousand five hundred dollars for one. So they're not doing the expensive Nvidia contracts. Um, I was going to say something else and I forget, but if I think of it, I'll, I'll answer it later. And any, any other questions, let me know. So let's talk about shorting. So this is a chart of the QQQs. So let's go, go all the way back. So things were great. Things were fabulous. Things were beautiful. Back in March, market was making brand new all-time highs. Everybody was buying every dip. Everything was going long. A lot of retail traders preferred to go long. Why? I really honestly don't know. But I'm biased because I've only shorted. Since I started trading, I've always preferred to short. From what I've gathered, knowing people, teaching people for as many years as I have, having conversations with people, going to all these webinars I do, these events where there's like 25 speakers in a shot in a day, I hear people talking. I think it's just easy for people to wrap their head around the concept of going long, whereas, and they just feel more comfortable going long. And, and again, I may be unique, but I feel more comfortable shorting. I will go long. I can make money going long too, but I really love shorting. And again, the last week and a half that we saw in the market, the sell-off that happened here, really just totally exemplifies and uh, why I like shorting because something like this can come in very quick, very fast. So let's go back to the beginning. So again, you can say, well, this happened because of interest rates. Well, this happened because of the war overseas. Does it really even matter? The fact is, no, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter at all. 
So here was the Monday. I'm going to go up. This was the 15th. So I'm just going to take it back to Monday the 15th. Actually, this was a week ago. It was tax day. Take it over here. We were approximately right at 442. We fell off a cliff. Again, this was April 15th. Boom, 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 and boom. So I'm just going to go into the Friday, which was the 19th. So let's just look at the last week. We went straight down. While that's very rare for anything to go straight down or anything to go straight up, uh, we did. We did, actually. Again, the QQQs is the market ETF, but we did. So from tip to tail, from the beginning of the week from Monday, we were around 442 and change, and all the way down here, snug is above Friday, the low Friday. We didn't close there, but the low was around 412-ish. That's a big move for anything, specifically even the market. And again, we're looking here at the QQQ. So why do I like to short? Because moves to the downside happen faster than moves to the upside. Also, again, you can make a lot of money shorting. Why? Because moves to the downside also are big. If you look at just what I clipped here, and I could have picked a different amount of time. I'm just looking here back February. I got a couple days of January. But just looking at this here, there's more red bars than green bars in the market now going back since the beginning of the year. You're saying, oh my God, that's shocking. Now, how could that be? We've been so bullish. It's, we made new highs. Look at the size of the reds. The reds are jimungo, okay? So even if you're like, oh, I still like to go long, I love to go long, it, it, you have to know how to short. And you're really missing out on lots of opportunities to profit in the market if you don't know how to short. And again, just because the market fell doesn't mean you can short anything in the world, okay? But anyways, what's the definition of shorting? It's to sell stocks for the securities or commodities, but we're focusing on stocks. That's what I do, or ETFs, the QQQ is an ETF. You short it in advance that the aim of the profit is when the price falls. So again, the example of the, the Qs here is you would have shorted before the drop happened. Again, if Friday, just saying Friday, you could have shorted the market here as a day trade Friday and got in, got out quick, or got in, got the drop, and got out any time, any time, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, you would have made money. And that was a big move even Friday, actually. It was like a $10 extension move on Friday. So you get in before the sell-off. So the price falls. That's the point of shorting. So what do you have? You have shorts to push the market down or stocks. You also have selling. Now, again, it's all about control. How do you figure all this out? You have to determine who is in control. If you're in the right direction of the control, you're going to be able to profit. And again, this is whether you go long or short. But you got to get the control right. This is I have, this is only through the beginning, the half middle midpoint of uh, April. This is not through last week. But Nvidia was extremely bullish. Okay, this is a very bullish chart. And again, who was in control of Nvidia? January, February, March, the bulls. Okay. So again, you would have wanted to be long this stock at any point. And since the beginning of the year, the stock has had a tremendous view. Even with the sell-off that we had since Friday in this stock, it's still very strong, still in an uptrend. And again, the year started out down in here in the 400s for NVIDIA. We didn't get up to 1,000. We tried. We almost did. Who knows? Okay. Right now, though, with the market falling, this fell too. But overall... The bulls have been in control of NVIDIA, so you would have wanted to be long. We've been doing this. This is Boeing. Again, I don't know when the earnings are out on this. They're coming up soon. This is earnings season. This is the time to be trading stocks. But this was something that we've been shorting from the majority of the year. This is Boeing. You know this again. You've heard it in the news. There's been different reasons. The reason I don't care. The fact is that the bears have been in control of Boeing. Again, this is the beginning of April. This was even before the market sell off. It sold off like a hot cake. This again, April 1st, stock was up here, right in the one low 190s, boop a doop a doo, came all the way down. Today it was down around 168 and change too. So again, for a stock to drop 20 plus points like that in two, three weeks, that's not strong. That's weak. So the bears are in control of BA. 
So again, we've been shorting it, or you can do a put. Again, someone was asking about options. A put is basically a short in an options trade. And again, you have to have an options account to do options, but options are a cheaper way, or I shouldn't say cheaper, but less expensive than taking a stock on a margin account because you just pay the price that you pay for the option and you can open up an options account with as well as $2,000, okay? So let's talk about the control, who decides the control and who is in control. Institutional money is in control. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. And for whatever reason, you can name the reasons all day long why you think the market fell and this and that. But the fact is institutional money is deciding at this juncture or did decide, I should say last week, to dump, sell the market off. And that's what happened. And we got, we got the trade, we were in shorts. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it's not, it is. Even if you think it's not, it is. And this is what confuses traders. And this is what makes traders feel like, oh, they it's rigged. There's nothing rigged. Everything that you need to know is right there. You may not know how to read it, but it absolutely is there, right there in front of you. Not understanding the importance of institutional money in the market is a classic mistake many traders make to their detriment, which means, again, there were people that were buying dips in the market last week and, it, and they lost money and it didn't, it didn't work. If you don't know how to read institutional money in a stock chart, you're missing out on a vital piece of information that can help you succeed. You're trading impaired if, in fact, you don't see who's really in control of the price action. And as far as I'm concerned, you're trading impaired if you don't know how to short. I'm not saying you should short this market forever or even tomorrow or anything at all. We rallied back today. I get it. I'm saying, in general, shorting is something that's extremely important that you need to know how to do. And if you don't know how to do it, you're going to miss out on at least half, if not more, of the moves that stocks in the market make. So even if you're not in love with shorting and not as focused on it as I am, which I am, okay, if you don't know how to do it, you're missing out on a vital piece of information. Now, who's to say, well, because people say, well, where do you think we go from here? What happens? I don't know. I'm an active trader. My job is not to predict where we will be on September 1st the end of 2024, what the Fed will do. Those are impossible things. No one can predict that. I can have a general sense of what I think we're doing and where I think we're going. But the reality is that, again, we have to make money right now, today. Today and tomorrow, by Friday, I do weekly options. We didn't do any new trades today, but that's what I do. As an active trader, I'm trading momentum. That means I need to make money right now. If you're in something where you're swing trading or you're looking at long-term trends or something like that, Yes, you can use my method to look at that, but then you're not actively making money every day or every week or even every month. Because if you're invested in swing trades or long-term trades, you must wait for those trades to have moves and they will swing around. They will wiggle and jiggle and wiggle and jiggle and you're not taking profits out every week in swing trades. And again, one of the reasons I would prefer to do options instead of the swing trading is because with options, you have a fixed risk. Yes, there's a time element associated with options, but that really doesn't bother me. If I look at a trade and I look at something, again, the market was, was an example last week, my expectation is that it will have a large move within the time I'm taking the trade. Again, usually one week. I might do something at a week and a half, but my expectation is that I want the move to happen within that time frame. Because if it doesn't, guess what? The institutional money really doesn't have charge of it. So then therefore, why do I want to be in it at all? We're not trend trading. That's not what we're doing. And, and just by the way, we're talking about the market. The market has not changed trend. Any other questions here as we're going along? Okay, so this was Tesla. I just put this in here because it's such a great example of, again, there's been a lot of news out on this, this thing, that thing, the other. This has earnings out. Uh, I think it's tomorrow night. <coughs> Is it tomorrow night or Wednesday night? No, I think it's tomorrow night. Yeah, it's the 23rd. <clears throat> this was back April 5th, okay? So again, Tesla, this is a 15-minute chart, fell off a cliff. So again, we were already in it, okay? Stock was up here around 170. This happened 15 minutes. This is another 15 minutes. This is in 30 minutes. Stock fell $10. That's, that's a big move. That's a dump. It's a sell-off, and it was an institutional dump. This is a good chart here to look and see this, though, because this happened on a higher time frame. I consider a 15-minute a higher time frame. 
and it happened like that. Really big, really quick, really fast, phew. And again, when you look at something like that, who's in control with the bears? You wouldn't have made any money that day going long Tesla. You would have wanted to be short, okay? So you determine who's in control and then you need to focus, which is a strategy. So again, my focus is shorting, which we're talking about, but my focus is also something called gaps. So what is a gap? Some of you know I do gaps. Some of you are recognized, you've been following me for a bit. Some of you may be new. So what is a gap? A stock gap when the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. Can you short every gap down? No. Can you short every gap up? No. Well, then how do you know? How do you know which ones to do? Because again, the gap itself, in order to short it, has to continue lower from 930 on. Otherwise, I'm not going to make any money. Again, how do you make money shorting? Well, the price has to drop. It has to drop from the time that I enter the trade. I'm not going to enter any trades in the pre-market. I trade after the open. So again, the stock price then has to drop from the time that I enter it into the time that I exit it. Now, this was INTC. <laughs> I, didn't, I could have held this a lot, lot longer. But this is a good example here of a gap. Stock closed here, up here, snug as above, right around 43 and change, gap down, boom. It was like at 41 and change. And this particular day, uh, we shorted it. We did a day trade and we did a put. Again, a put is a short as an option. It's just a cheaper way to take the stock. And again, I got out this day. As uh, people always say with my options, is this the results you show that we showed earlier? Is this the best exit you could have gotten? Absolutely not. Again, I, I, I'd be a psychic if I knew that. And this was a profitable trade. I thought it was a good one. And I got out and I wanted to book money and it kept going. And it just fell every day. It actually fell every day to the day of expiration. So this is one that was just, I don't even know what it was. I didn't even look at it the last day. It was so far through the strike and in the money. I typically, I get out of a trade, I never look back and say, woulda, shoulda, coulda. I book money on the trade, it was a good trade. You can't hold everything to a piggy target. But anyways, going back to what the definition of a gap is, a gap is a difference in the close and the open. This closed here at four o'clock and this open here at 9.30. If you come and wanna trade with me and do the class, you would learn how to figure out that this is gonna fall. That's the whole point of doing my class. I go through the process to determine this is gonna fall that the control is in the bears. Otherwise, this could have rallied, in which case we would have lost money, but we didn't. I was right and it fell. It's the same way I read the market. Anyways, this was a really nice one and I just, I never went back after it, but it just kept going. But this is a good example here of what is a gap. What is a gap? JPM, this is another one we did. Stock closed here and gap down. This was the first day of earnings season. It was a Friday. Stock closed up here around 195 and change, boom. Open in the morning here, oops, around 188 something. And we shorted it and we did a day trade and we did a fast trade and we got in and out. Here was the trade. 187.35 was the entry exit. My exit was 185.20. Again, this continued down. It was really ridiculous where it went. We'll go back and look at it, but I like to do the fast trade. So 36.55, I think is a good trade. Here's the one minute. Again, if you want to hold trades longer, I tell you where I'm exiting the room. If you want to hold them longer, that's up to you. But if you want to follow me in the room, you're taking the trades, you're getting out where I do. Stock close here, gap down. Again, this was April 12th. It was a Friday. We shorted it, got the drop. But I just want to show you here where this went. You could have held it down to 11. It came down, broke 184. On the live day, though, this came all the way down almost to 182 but I did not hold it down there. So again, if you follow me in the room, you will get out where I do in the morning. And if you wanna hold it, uh, another idea is you could have put the stop and break even. Um, you could have got in, got out. You could have taken it again. Why I like to focus on the morning is because I don't wanna worry about the wiggles and jiggles of you know, news coming out, press conferences, other things that could happen, Fed minutes, but again, I'm showing you some examples here of things that continued much, much further where I exited the trades. For me though, I think it's so important to focus on that morning time. That morning time is just critical. So what do I do with the gap? I get up in the morning and I rate it. Something gaps tomorrow, I'm gonna rate it. I rate gaps with 26 point checklist to determine the stock's direction. This is what people come and learn from me. And then they take the trades that I call in the room if they wanna do them with me. 
And then people, if they want to do options, sign up for the newsletter. <coughs> I have a good mix of people. Some people are doing both. Some people prefer one or the other. It's neither here nor there. There's pros and cons of doing day trades and options, like I said. I don't call the same trades at everything, though, all the time. <coughs> so, for example, I'm, I didn't do, actually, a put in JPM. I could have done it, and I didn't. Um, and what we did the day trade. So I don't always do the exact same thing. So that's another thing. If you're in the room and you want to just do the trade in the room <coughs> and you want to do the day trade as an option, you can do that too. You can do that too. That's another idea. Here's another one we did. LVS. Stock closed here. Gap down. Stock closed up here. It was at 50 and change. Open in the morning. Again, this was the 18th. This was Thursday. And I rated it that it would fall and drop, and it did. And it dropped, fell, boom. Here was this trade. Entry was 47.20. Again, exit was 46.10. Dollar, out, done, boom. Here was the one minute. So again, if you're in the room calling the trade, you're doing it with me. Stock close here, gap down, dropped. We hit it, got the drop, out, done, boom. This continued a little bit more, almost went down to 45. I forget what the low there was. Again, I got in and got out. I had my target. It was trying to get it to 46. Almost got there, 10 cents from the number out. But it did keep going, and you could have almost made another dollar on this. Again, set your risk. Put your stops in. Follow me in the room. Take the train. I specifically think people that are new should be following me to the letter in the room. That's the purpose of being in the room. Once you get acclimated to doing it, again, if you want to hold things a little bit longer, I think that's fine too. But I, people like coming to the room because I'm doing the work for them. That's the benefit of being in the room. I'm rating the gaps. I'm saying I like LVS. I like JPM. This is the best gap. You should still be rating them yourself. It's the consistency for me that keeps me pushing forward, moving forward, having more winners than losers, having some very big winners, okay? But again, it's my choice to exit trades very quickly. I'm showing you examples here, all of these, of which you could have held longer than, you know, way after I exited the trades. The purpose, though, of the rating system is really to help me determine who is in control. If I'm rating the gap down and I feel that the bears are not in control, well, I'm certainly not going to short it. Now, what would make me determine that? Where well, I'm not going to get the rating. So if I have a 26-point rating system, I cut off 20. It's got to be 20 points or more for me to take the trade in the direction of the gap. If I rate it and it rates 15, for example, then I say, ooh, then I'm not going to short it. I'm not going to do the setup. I'm not going to do anything with it, not an option, not a day trade, nothing, because it could flip and the control could go against it, in which case then I don't want to be short. Remember, you have to have a stock price drop, sell off in order to make money shorting. <laughs> so it really is about the control. What the, and again, you could reverse this for the law upside. And we do go long sometimes. But, you know, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of the last long we did, to be honest with you. But think about the control factor. Think about the power institutional money has in the market. It really, really, really makes perfect sense. And I don't mean to simplify this because understanding all the points and if you come and you learn from and you take the class, again, the class is 14 hours. It's all weekend. But, you know, the philosophy behind it is simplistic when you think about it. And I think so many trainers try to get so tricky with their trading, specifically because they're losing. They say, oh, my gosh, this must be so complicated that I have to do something crazy and tricky in order to make money and profit. But that's really not the case. It's just not knowing what to look at. And that's where many people are. And, and I also think people are too reliant on indicators. They're so reliant on indicators that they won't give up on them. And many times people are also doing things for a long time. And I don't know if this is any of you. I'm not pointing the finger. I don't know. I'm just saying this from having conversations with people and doing webinars and fielding questions. People will do something for a while, even if it, if it stops working, because they did it at one point and it did work. So they said, well, it's going to go back to working, even if they're losing. They just can't get off that thing. Maybe that was one point in time that that strategy or thing worked. You know what I'm saying? And that was it. And it'll never work again. It's For me, this, the, the, the answer to my success is the consistency with what I do. 
only looking at gaps, gaps has to rate 20 points or more, and the focus on the shorts. For so many people out there that are trading, they lack the consistency in staying with one strategy. Of course, the strategy has to be good, it has to work. But again, they will. people will, in general, stay on something forever that doesn't work because they did it maybe 10 years ago they did it and it worked, but it was a blip in time. Again, you could go long uh, anything with a market rally. It doesn't mean you should, or, or vice versa, shorting. You know what I mean? Like to, we're talking about shorting. But it doesn't mean it's going to work consistently. So the consistency is really, really the key to making it in this business. And again, you get consistent. Making twenty thousand a month is is a flash in the pants. You could be able to make twenty thousand in one trade in one week. So it's really about the idea of just sticking with it and then getting good at it and then finding the trades. I mean, I don't. I never know what I'm going to do on any given day. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I don't know until I get up in the morning and I see the gap. Now, we were talking about options. Again, this is the option newsletter. This was a put. So we did Tesla. This feels like forever ago now, but it was March 5th. We did the 180s. It expired the 15th. So I'll do something like this out in a week and a half. These weren't, I didn't think these were crazy pricey, but 450 for one. You could have done three and risk 13.50. We flipped it around. It was 100%. Let's look at the chart. Took it on one day, exited the second day. Sometimes that can happen. Sometimes it takes a couple days. Again, called it on the 5th, got the drop, boom. Again, here's where it was. So we did it basically at the strike, 180, got the drop, boom, fell, out, done. You can do options this fast and this quick. Again, you don't have to hold it forever. And if you're in something, and again, if you're up in it, no one says you should hold it forever. It's a train. You're getting the move, you're getting the momentum. It could be on the day. It could be overnight in the gap. And again, there's one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock at its money. In that example there with Tesla, we did puts, the stock sold off. The stock sold off today again. We were in puts. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money, or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people. And guess what? Of which there's a lot of in the market. There's a lot of power money people in the market. There's a lot of institutional money in the market. There's a lot of traders in the market, a lot of day traders in the market, a lot of retail traders in the market. There's so many people that are trading now, and now they even have the daily options. I'm not doing those. I have no interest in doing this. But actually, you could, again, do technically with what would be a day trade in the market as an option. Like, you could have bought a put, with a Friday expiration last week in the SPY into the open and got out into the close on a Friday expiration and made money. I don't do that. I don't do the same days, but you really could have done it. And actually, you could have done that any day last week. Now, again, that's something that if you don't want to have a margin account, if you don't have a margin account. But for me, it's all about the checklist. I go through the gap. I rein it. It's about getting to the basics of what you're doing, which has to be the strategy. Why do you want to do this trade? Everyone wants to make money. I want to make money. You want to make money. That's that's the reason we get out of bed every day. But if you can't look at this as something like gambling, it's if you don't have a strategic reason why you're going to short this. You have to say, I think this is lower. Therefore, I'm going to short it. If you think it's higher, what are you doing shorting it? Do you know what I'm saying? And again, this is one of the problems where people are looking at the overall market last week, that a rewind last week, people are saying, oh, we had a sell off. This is extended now. It's extended. It's, it can't go any lower. People are saying that today. As we speak with the way the market rallied today, people are saying, this is extended. It can't go any lower. Really? When something's at zero, that's when it can't go any lower. <laughs> this is basically... You can't short it then. Anyways, coming back to the gap idea, this was the JPM day that we did it here, the 12th. Again, stock close here, gap down, boom. And again, I didn't do a put in this, but I sort of wished I had. But anyways, it worked. But I used the 26-point checklist. That's how I know where the stock's going to go on the day. That's how I use it. That's how I take the train. That's how I do it. In this case here, you could have held it all day. It did pretty much go to the dream target. I would have said 180, but I didn't hold it all the way down to 182 and change. I did what I normally did and got in, got out in the morning. 
But I mean, in the environment we're in right now, one, it's earnings season, two, this market has been crazy, okay? Crazy good. Anything can happen. Things can go straight down, things can go straight up, things can go all day. You never knew. But again, we've been on top of some of these things. Tesla is one of them. We've been on top of this this year. We've been on top of the BA. We've been on top of NVIDIA. You know, some of these things. And in this case here with Tesla, Tesla opened this morning way, way lower. And I had called puts that were expensive, actually, out last week. So the benefit of doing options is you're in a trade overnight. If it goes against you, you can't lose any more than you have at risk. If you risk $1,000 and it goes against you, you can't lose any more than 1000 if it goes in your favor, you can make a lot of money because it could open in the morning through the strike that you took. And again, that's a massive, massive benefit unless you want to do swing trades. Because again, to hold something overnight, I'm never holding my day trades overnight. I'm never, ever, ever, ever doing that. If I'm in a trade and I'm down in the trade and it hasn't gone and it's getting late in a day trade for whatever reason it hasn't gone, I'll kill it before four. I'm not going to stay with the trade overnight. No one should do that. Anyways, like I said, trading isn't gambling. You have to put the odds in your favor, and you're going to do that how exactly? How are you going to do that? You have to look at something, and you have to determine who is in control. It really is about the control methodology for this, for making money trading. For options, got to get the timing right. <clears throat> for day trades, well, you got to get the timing right, too. Because if it doesn't go between 9.30 and 4, how are you going to make money? So, I mean, it's getting the direction, but it's also getting the timing right as well. But why do I like gaps? Because gaps are the most powerful show of price action in, in a chart. They're extremely important, and many people don't know how to trade them. Gaps have big moves. We talked about that. All these ones I'm showing you, the market, JPM, NVIDIA, everything I showed you today, they're all fat bars. Gaps can move up or down, that's true. But again, I prefer to short. And some of the biggest momentum moves in a daily chart come from a gap. It's earnings season right now. What does that mean? It means stocks reporting their quarterly earnings. So that means that they're going to have a move. I don't know if it's going to be up. I don't know if it's going to be down. Like I told you, Tesla has earnings. I have no idea what Tesla is going to say in the earnings. I am not best friends with Elon Musk. But I know I'm going to watch him. And I know it's going to do something. And I don't know if it's going to fall or rally. But I know it's going to gap. And then when I see it, I'll rate it. And then I'll determine at that juncture if I'm going to do it or not. Because remember, if I rate it and it rates poorly, then I'm not going to play it. I also don't flip it. But anyways, the most powerful gaps are created with institutional money. And so you're, you're, you're like salivating, waiting for that to happen, waiting for a good one. You don't know when you're going to get it, but when you get one, you rate it. And if you rate it and it rates 20 points or more, then you know you have a good one. And then you just, then you go, then you do it. And it doesn't matter if you do it as an option or a day trade, but I personally like to do both. Um, Ronnie is asking a question or R, R, what's your name? I love your name, R, R, W. Uh, hi, thanks for the information. How would you have traded the Verizon gap up today? I wouldn't have done it, it didn't set up, but I would have looked to go long, but it never set up, um, and it dropped. Um, I don't term bars that, but it fell, if that's what you're saying, it sold off. We didn't do it, it was a gap up, it was earnings, but it never set up to go long. Um, do I have a percentage stop loss in options that if not, you're willing to lose the full 100%? I lose the 100% if I lose. So that's my personal choice, how I choose to um, manage trains. Let me go back to the market here. You don't have to do that. Uh, you could kill a train. Um, RW, Rob, is saying, what do you do if it's down? Again, I've been doing this a long, long time. So I tell people what's the best thing to get the best results, to have the most similar option results. Whether you want to do this or not is up to you. I call puts in the market here, and yeah, people killed them. Why? They were down. They were beautiful trades that went and worked. So, again, I never said that every options trade that I do goes the second I call it. That's the benefit of doing options. You're getting the cushion. 
whatever the time I'm calling the trade out in. With a day trade, we gotta get it right away. So we gotta get it, preferably in the morning, you know. But there are people that kill trains. I do not kill trains. Actually, I did kill one train in the last month. And you know what? It went on to work and I was so pissed at myself for killing it. It was a long. I was in an Amazon call that I killed and took a partial loss in because I knew the market was going to sell off. It was early. The trade went on to work anyways. And so I took a loss in a trade that worked and I didn't have to do it. So I didn't follow my own rule there. And I said, oh my God, I'm never doing that again. But of course I know this because I've been trading for a long, long time. Never kill anything. <laughs> That's my motto. That's not a rule. If you want to kill trades, you can. But know that if you kill trades when they're 50% down or 30% down, if you join and you do it, know that there will be many trades that go on to work and you will take losses in the trades and they go on to work. And then you're going to be mad at yourself like some people did kill this and they didn't get this so that is a personal management decision that you must make that you can discuss with me if you want to trade like me you will hold everything win or lose to the last day meaning not get out of winners the last day you will hold losers if they never went to the friday expiration whatever i call it if they never go but I didn't do that with an Amazon call and I regretted it. I, the only reason I was debating that with myself that I did that was I was so certain the market would fall, but it was the week before that we, we sold off. So the trade ed, did end up going in time before it fell, but I was right about the market and, and I stayed in the trades here and these went. There was something else we did that kind of did a turn like this. I forget what it was. There's just been too many trades, too many trades recently. But that is something that you have to kind of get through mentally, I think, Rob, because people don't like to get up in the morning and see a train be completely down that they just took. And that's a thing where I say to people, then, you know, maybe your risk is too big. So I say, okay, so fine. So say somebody's risking, I'm just making up a number here. Say someone has three grand on in a risk and an option and they get stressed out if the trade reverses my my advice is then back it off then don't risk three thousand you're better off risking fifteen hundred and letting the trade play out because in my experience as long as i'm doing this holding trades and giving every single one a chance to work really does mean you get the best overall results for the options at least with me and part of the reason why people get worked up and upset about trading in general is they say well the market the market looked like it was going to make new highs. Whatever day that was, I think the day that it rallied was a Thursday, and then we fell to Friday. I, yeah, it looked like it was going to, and I was in puts and they were down, but I was like, okay, this doesn't make any sense, and I stayed with the trades. I was already in them. Friday morning, I got up. I said, oh, now this makes perfect sense, but that's trading. That's the market. That's why you, number one, have to know what you're doing, and number two, you have to have your sizing in line if you find you're nervous about a trade, chances are you have too much risk on. It's always the same reason. It's the same thing with day trades. If you're in a trade and you're nervous about it, where I call a trade and it goes one bar down and you want to kill it and you're only up 10, 15 cents and I'm trying to get a dollar out of it. If you're so nervous, then you probably have too much risk on. You have too many shares. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be nervous about being in a trade. Knowing that the trade is either going to win or lose, and if you are, get back to the basics. Go back and rate the gap. That's that's what I do. I go back and I rated the gaps in the market that maybe take the trades in the first place that I was in the day we reversed. I said, no, I this is good. This is good. In fact, I even sent an email out because I knew everybody was going to be like, you know, weird that day. And I said, you got to be patient. You got to be patient. Some people listened to me. Some people didn't. But I've been doing this a long time. Long time. In fact, I think that day I did a webinar on the Wednesday we got down. And I said the market was slower and it was going to fall. And I don't even know if anybody believed me until Friday. But I said it. I said it in the webinar. But that particular day we rallied. Anyways, the bottom line is there's more to life than work. Money is a vehicle to having a better life. This is a picture I took at the park. I, since I moved along the park, my life has changed so much. 
I love nature. I There's no one more shocked about that than me. I love walking in the park and I'm spending so much time now really enjoying my life. You know, whereas when I had my mortgage job, I was just working nonstop seven days a week. You know, I mean, if you're working 50, 60, 70 hours a week, people are like, oh, I'm working from home. You can work from home and end up working more hours. You know, your employer is still expecting a lot out of you as much as ever before, if not more, even if you're working from home. You need to have a good quality of life and there has to be some kind of balance with that. And I've gone through different careers, many different careers, but the mortgage job is just the most recent one where really that was just sucking up all of my personal time. It, it may take work to get to the point where you are successful as a trader. It may take time, it may take money. It's definitely gonna take both. But the fact is in the end, once you get to that point, that's totally worth it. And then you can enjoy your life and sit back. Again, I don't stress about things if they don't work because I have confidence in my own system and myself and I say well if I lose in this trade today tomorrow I'm probably gonna have a big one and that's kind of how I look at it because I've been doing this for a long long time again one of the biggest uh, again failures I guess you could say of traders is that they don't stick with one system so they really don't have confidence in anything they don't have confidence in the market they think it's rigged. They don't have confidence in a mentor, which makes it even worse. They don't have confidence in themselves because they may have made mistakes, which again is something that you just have to learn the process and get over when you make mistakes and then fix them. But the reality is that you've got to be confident in the strategy that you're using to trade. And if you don't even have one, well, that's step one. And then you've got to get confidence in it. And again, for people to come to me, I say, go back to the rating, rate it. People come into the room and they want me to do all the work and I do it and I'm there and I'm doing it. But the fact is the whole point of you learning it yourself and doing the classes so that you will do it too. You will do it too. You do it yourself. And convince yourself that Tesla is lower, that the market's lower or whatever we're doing. You know, I'm calling the trades, do them if you want. But if you're like, ah, uh, then go back and rate it. You talk yourself into it. Because again, that's the point of doing the class. I'm teaching you in the class what to look for. And if you get the tally and if you get the total, that's how you're convincing yourself to do it. But anyways, one of the main strategic reasons for shorting is, okay, you are shorting the fear, you are shorting the panic, okay? And, and that's the whole point of it. And again, stocks drop fast when they fall. Well, Rob, you can do the class online. You can do the class online and learn from me. And I don't know if I'm going to do a class live in New York or not. It's something that I thought about doing. If I do a class in New York, it would be several several months in advance. I give people and it would be more expensive than the online class I'm doing now because I have to rent space and all of that stuff. But I mean, one of the benefits of having an online meeting is that people can come and learn from me and do the class. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying, fear and panic is the main, main reason why stocks fall so quickly. Shorting gives me an edge. Again, why? Most traders go long. Few traders know how to short. Also, selling comes in fast, unlike buying. Hence the fear and the panic situation. Institutional money sells and takes short positions in stocks in the market. And that's why, again, this is something that you need to put in your bucket. If you are not shorting, you've got to learn how to do it because you're going to miss out on many many moves not just last week but other times too this was back this feels like a while ago now but this was only uh april 4th again this is a 15 minute again market was up to start out the day rallied again i don't know does anybody remember this day sold off like a hot cake again this is the spy etf we were around 523 and change fell all the way down here again 10 points plus so this was roughly around one o'clock in the afternoon, three o'clock. So in two hours, again, this is the SPY ETF. In two hours, the market fell 10 points. That's insane, people. Again, you would have wanted to be short. There was no money to be made long there at any point at all. And again, you can see big move, fear, panic came into the market. So again, if you want to do options, you would get a newsletter that goes to your email this was BA, strike was 190. We did puts again in this. We've been doing puts in this all along. Uh, this was, sometimes I'll send the emails out early. This is around 9 a.m. 
this was cheap. A dollar forty-five was a massive, massive move. Three hundred eighty-three percent return investment. Let's look at the BA. We were in this early again. I called it, and it just continued to go one ninety. Let's look three eleven. Oh, here. So again, stock close here, gap down, fell, boom. So again, sometimes I'll do something at the strike, some are at the money, sometimes I'll do it away from the money. In this case here, again, the pressure was on. This stock is even lower now than it was before <laughs> because this was early March, mid-March. But again, the options is a different service because it goes to your email. It's a newsletter. But we were talking about the Fed, we were talking about interest rates. You can't rely on economic data or even fundamentals to make decisions. Why? Because at the end of the day, you don't know what they're really going to do. You don't know exactly what the outcome is going to be. Even if you knew exactly what the Fed was going to do, you don't know exactly what the market reaction is going to be. So it's one of these things where you have the price, you've got live data, you must have live data to trade. And again, everybody has that same live data. You have to have good data feed, you have to have live feed, you have the candlesticks, you have the, it's technical analysis, you're looking at it. You can look at a one minute, a two minute, a five minute. I'm doing the ratings on the daily. Again, even if you knew what the Fed was gonna do, you really couldn't predict the market reaction. But in live, live time, everyone's seeing the same price. Everyone's seeing the price of the market like on Friday into the close. Everyone's seeing the open tomorrow, wherever the market opens tomorrow, everyone will see that too. Everyone sees this information. It's how you interpret it to take the trade on that live day that makes a difference. And again, we were talking about the whole point of the control issue. But every time you take a trade, you weigh the pros and cons, every time. Is this trade worth taking? Does it rate good enough? Do I, am I putting the odds in my favor? because there's no guarantees. And that's why you need a system as high odds. And every, again, everybody wants to do well and wants to make money, but some days there's nothing to do. Some days there's no good gaps. Now in earnings season, most days there is a lot of things to look at, but in between there's the slow period. But for me, it's all about the checklist. If you decide you wanna come and take my class, this is what you learn from me. The 26 point golden gap rating system helps you pick which stock to trade each day. It pinpoints ahead of time which stock will have the move in the day with volatility to train. Having a checklist keeps you organized and focused. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart and a stock to make the correct decision. Having a checklist helps assist you with directional bias, which is key. And having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals. A checklist is a plan of action and everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action. How are you gonna make money today? How are you gonna make money tomorrow? How are you gonna make 20 grand a month? How are you gonna make $1,000 tomorrow? How are you going to do it? Because if you have no plan, you're not going to do it. You're going to fail. And again, on a professional level, all high income career field specialists have checklists. They go through the process of what they do. Everybody does. Okay. It's this really helps you stay connected to what you're doing instead of going off the rails with the whole gambling mentality. But it's all about institutional money. That's what I'm looking at in the gap. And again, that has to do with the rating system. <clears throat> Any questions here from anyone? How are we doing? You're trading for six years. That's a long time then, Rob. Hopefully you're successful. If you're not, maybe you, you want to look into the class. James, I see you. I don't know if you're still trading or if you're just thinking about coming back. Mark, I think... You've been following me for a while. Michael, I know you've been following me for a while. Do you have any questions? <clears throat> yeah, Mark, you've been following me for a while. James is thinking about coming back. I've had some old timers come back. Some old timers come back recently. People that did the class a while back. So it's about working smarter, not harder. And again, I think I learned that from my mortgage job. I learned really just to, you know, for me, yes, I could have held some of these trades longer, but like this whole idea about being able to take a quick trade and get out and be done and not have any stress the rest of the day. 
do a couple videos, go take a walk in the park, do a webinar like here. It's like there's something about having control back of the quality of my life that is part of what I want at this point in my life. Do you know what I mean? Like, again, the way that the world is right now, you know, everyone thinks, oh, well, you work from home and that's great. And again, that's a, that's a nice thing about training because not everyone's working from home. And many employers are trying to push people that are working from home back to the office. I don't think it's working out too well, but you know, you could still work yourself to death from home. We're sitting in front of the computer far too many hours. And then before you know it, I mean, here it is. I can't believe like someone said, well, when's the class in May? I'm like, I have no idea. I can't even think about May. May, May is Memorial Day. Like it's halfway through 2024. I mean, I literally just took my Christmas decorations down like at Easter. <laughs> my father came, I store my Christmas stuff in my parents' house in Pennsylvania. I don't have a storage here, this apartment. I'm like, I can't even, this, this year already feel like has flown by. So time just keeps going. And it's not going to stop down for any and slow down for any of us. And it's like, I don't want to miss out on experiences and years of my life working as hard as I did for some of those years, you know, when I was in my 20s and I just felt like I worked like a dog and, and I just didn't see enough out of it. And yeah, I made good money doing mortgages, but it just, for, for the, if I equated it to the time, time that, that I worked, the number of hours, I probably was making like $7.50 an hour. Like, like it, it was, was just, just ridiculous. ridiculous. Um, Terry O has a question. Terry speaks. <laughs> Does your 26 point checklist use fundamentals as well or technical or only technicals? No fundamentals. Although, uh, if you love fundamentals and that's fine, I'm not opposed to fundamentals. The points have nothing to do with fundamentals, but if you want to use fundamentals to support to support the 26 point rating, I don't have a problem with that. The only issue would be if you rated it and it rates good and then the fundamentals do not support the rating, I would want you to go with the rating. So no, I don't use fundamentals, uh, but if you want to and you get into that and you like that stuff, that's fine, but I, you need to use it as a support. I don't want to see you not take a trade, but but, you know, again, if you don't take the train, the fundamentals say something different, the train goes on to work, you find out the checklist was right, you'll, you'll even learn something from that. Do you know what I'm saying? You'll say, oh, and you scratch your head. Because, again, a lot of these times when something happens with the fundamentals, it's already built into the price action way, way ahead of time when the fundamentals come out. You're sort of saw that, and, again, we were short BA. I think BA was the first put we did for 2024. I had no idea when I did that first trade in January that Boeing was going to have issue after issue after issue all year. I mean, you can't even name all the issues that that stock has had this year, real fundamental issues since January that have affected, obviously, the chart and the stock has collapsed. Did I know that in January? No. Could anybody have known that? No. Did somebody know something? Hell yeah, somebody probably did. Because if you look at the trades we did at the beginning of the year, we had some huge options trades in Boeing before any of these things came out. So again, you know, we don't really know the ins and outs, but you're usually those things already built in because the stock is moving and gapping. Do you know what I'm saying? Before everything hits the fan. But I don't use fundamentals. If you want to, that's totally fine. I'm not against them, but it's, it's a support. It shouldn't be the be all end all. Any other questions? That was a good question. Anyways, a big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market. Stocks creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. And when you're looking for institutional money, you're really bringing the side of the power in a stock. You want to be on the side of the power in order to make money trading. And I'm not saying this isn't tricky. It certainly can be tricky. The market was tricky this year. Don't think the trickiness is over. But the trickiness isn't over. There's a whole camp of people out there after the sell-off last week that think 100% the market's lower. This is it. This is the end. Then there was then there's another camp of people that think, oh, my God, the sell-off that happened, this is it. This is the low for the year. We're finally going to move back up. We had to do that. We had to have the pool back. I don't talk like that. But the people say, oh, we, we had to pull back. 
uh, it's, this, this was inevitable, and now they're going to go along, and everything's going to be fine. So, you, you know, it depends what group of people you talk to. You know, I play it as it comes. We did the puts, we're out. I don't know why you'd still be in them. You could still be in some trades and actually still be up, even through today's rally, but you got to take profits in trades when they go in your direction. Again, your idea is not to hold something forever. If you have to go, Mark, that's fine. If you have questions, you can email me. I know I'm just kind of talking here now. It's after five. Anyways, how do I know ahead of time? I rate the gap. I'm not predicting the gap itself. Like I told you, Tesla's earnings. I don't know what it does. For all I know, it could explode on the earnings tomorrow night. Maybe we'll go long Tesla. Maybe it'll gap down and I won't short it. And it'll reverse. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Again, I don't predict the gap. I wait for the gap. Then I rate it. But again, what creates the momentum in the gap? Institutional money. Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are nothing gaps. And some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. We've seen those in things like Tesla, what we were just talking about. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. And that's how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you. And again, this isn't trend trade. This is, you know, I just, I want to make money right now. Right now could be today or it could be between now and Friday, you know, if I'm doing an option or whatever. But anyways, every day I'm looking for stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, big moves in the day. Number three, early confirmation of my bias and a move between 9, 3, and 10. I try to get in and out as quick as I can, but that's, again, my personal preference. And if you're following me in the room, then that's what you should do, too. Then I'm also looking for precise entries with follow-through and a good risk to reward, which is, of course, important because, again, you you don't want to scalp. I think scalping is overrated, whether it's an expensive stock or a cheap stock. I don't feel like you get the most bang for your buck. We're trying to trade momentum. If you're risking a dollar, you're trying to get a dollar. If you're risking a dollar, you're trying to get a dollar fifty. Too. Again, same thing with options. You want to return an investment of you know 100 percent if you can get it. Some of these were way more, but that's not always planned. The idea of taking a trade and paying a dollar for an option and only making 25 cents, I just don't think that's worth it. So, you know, that's, that's again, I think what most people tend to do then after a while. They tend to trade and just be happy ending, ending it all that they're up because they're so concerned with losing that they just almost scalp everything. As soon as they're up, they get out because they're, they're not up that often. And then, of course, when they lose, they lose more. So then the losses, the wins don't cover the losses because they're getting out so quick in the wins. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyways, don't waste time trading without getting anywhere. It's so important to have a focus. And, and, and of course, you so many people just, you know, they spend years trying to, trying to do this and they don't get anywhere. And, you know, I know people follow me for a long time and I appreciate that. It's nice to know. But I, I think sometimes people just miss the boat because I'm right here. I'm like right in people's faces all for so many years, and they just don't, they just don't realize it, you know. And, and don't take any action and, and keep losing. And talk about that webinar I did. Like I mean, I didn't know any of those people in that webinar, but there were some strangers talking there because again, the market was down that day, and people were complaining they were down money, they were in long. So I don't know if they were in options or swing trades. Again, these people were all strangers to me. But they were clearly with services that had them long the market, and they were upside down in trades that morning I did the lecture. And then that's how I think I got to talk more. I said, nobody should be long anything right now. You know, it's, 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 you, you, it's extremely important to know what you're doing trading on any environment, but I do think that 2024 is going to be very different than 2023, which you've already seen now in the last few weeks. But I don't think it's going to be as easy as some people anticipated, and I think that's become very obvious actually in the last month. Anyways, can you do this if you're a beginner? Yes. You just got to learn it. And you start slow, and you risk small amounts until you get it, until you learn it. Whether you're doing day trades or options, you, you, you just go slow. The Golden Gap course teaches a strategy on how to trade gaps. So the course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to play this stock on the day, which is what we go over in the class. We go over the entries. And the course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. That's the key. 
on terrorists talking about fundamentals. If I had to bring every earnings report and follow everything and know everything about every report, I'd never, I would never sleep. I wouldn't have time to, I wouldn't have time to go for park walks or energy. So we have the price. Thank God it's enough. And so again, if that's something you get into, fine. But I don't have the time to, to read all that information. Obviously, I'm on the news. I know what's happening. You know, Boeing, Tesla, I hear what's going on. But she could have terrible earnings, and the stock could gap up and run up like crazy, and vice versa. You could have great earnings, the stock could fall off a cliff. There's one investment that supersedes all others. Invest in yourself. This is something that I think I just inherently knew, but I'm also a very confident person. So when I decided to trade and I didn't figure it out, you know, I was struggling at the beginning too. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was confident in myself. I think if you, if you launch that confidence in yourself, if you're normally a confident person, somewhere along the way we trade and you've lost it because you've lost money in the market, you're not alone. People lose money in the market. They, if they don't know what to do, they will lose. Remember something you're good at. Think about something that you're good at to gain your confidence back, whether it's a sport, whether it's a job you have, a career you have right now, whether it's being a great parent, a great, a great father or a mother or something. Think about something you're really, like maybe you're good sh cooking. You can cook a wonderful chicken parmesan or something. Think of something you are confident in that you're good at and remember that feeling and then that's where you want to be with your trading because everybody has gifts and talents and everyone is good at something different. It takes time to get good at something when you're doing something new. And you may say, well, this isn't new. I've been doing this forever. I've been doing this for 10 years, 20 years, whatever. If you're new to what I do, and that's what's going to be new, and that's why you have to learn it, and then you get good at it. And if, if what you're doing was working, then you wouldn't be searching, searching, searching for something else to do. So when your confidence is low and you're feeling crappy, it's probably because what you're doing, the strategy you're doing, doesn't work. So don't blame yourself. And you got to get that confidence up. And, and, and unfortunately, the only way to really do that is to start training and getting a string of wins under your belt. Consecutive winning trains days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And sometimes the amount doesn't even matter. It could be 500, 200, 300, 400. It doesn't even have to be thousands of dollars. It's the whole idea of your account, you know, your balance in your trading account going up instead of dipping down, which is the case for many people when they're losing. And anyways, you need to get value out of your education. I try to do as much as I can for people with providing the value and the education, but I also try to provide value in the live room, calling the trains, having the support system, being there for questions. But the checklist is everything. That's how I make the determination. That's how I'm able to predict the market's going to sell off. Tesla's is going to sell off. BA, everything that we've done, everything we talked about here, and all the videos, if you go on YouTube and you watch all my videos, the room and everything else that I posted, and the stats that I showed you today, it's, I'm able to do it because of the rating system. So empower yourself today to trade if you want to learn my system. It's a complete system to use to trade. I teach the class once a month. I don't know the main dates yet, but the April class is this weekend, which is Saturday and Sunday, and it's crazy, but next week's May already. April 27th and 28th, this weekend is a class, Saturday and Sunday, always during the weekend. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. This is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks. That our professional bearish gap class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. 9 to 5 Eastern Time. I'm in New York, so therefore you have to get up wherever you are, Central Time Zone, if you're overseas. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Now, the combo includes the trends and the bowling gap. Combo includes the trends, which is Tuesday, 11 to 3. Again, class is online. And I'm doing an earnings season special, which I've been running now for the last week. People have already signed up. Uh, this is a good deal. The trading room subscription will be free for one year. If you sign up for the Golden Gap Course combo by Friday, which you have to do the class this weekend, the newsletter for the options free for one year with the combo and the market report free for one year as well, and the Gap Options course, which is now June 13th. So you would do three classes next week, Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, options class in June, and then you can start to trade, and you can start to trade with us this week, and people have already done that. And it's just a busy time right now. You know, it's a busy time because of earnings and we don't know what we're going to get. We'll see. 
Anyways, if this is something you're interested in, you can email me if you have questions, but really think about what I said. It's just 2024, I think, is really pushing everything to the forefront for people where they're really kind of trying to regroup and reset four years out of COVID. And for me personally, it was really about having a shift where I have a, a greater focus on my personal life. You know, running a business, I have a lot of responsibilities besides trading every morning in the room. And for me, I said, you know what, I need to take some time for myself. And Central Park has been just a blessing and a gift for me to be able to do that, just to pull myself out, go take a walk in the park, even in the middle of the day, just to kind of get away and just reset myself. So if you see yourself falling into some kind of tendency with your training or stress level or anything, really, nature has just been wonderful for me. Go outside, take a walk, do something in nature, or get a hobby where you pull yourself away from it to kind of shift and reset. Sometimes for people with training, it really is just something like that, where they just need a new strategy. They know that people can make money in the market, but they don't have a strategy. And again, maybe maybe it's mine, maybe it's gas, maybe it's shorting. Some of you, I know you've been following me, I know you want to do the class, you just have to decide if the timing is right. The timing is right for you. Any other questions? This is a good lecture. Good lecture. Let's have a good week, people. If you do have questions, you can email me here. Again, if you have questions now, you can email me. Or you can ask me now. Or you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. Again, you can go to YouTube, follow me on YouTube. If you're interested in the special, it's running through Friday. If you want to join, email me for forms. And anybody else? You're welcome. Thank you, Michael. Good to see some of you. Wonderful. Have a great evening.